Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the return of my favourite game, Epic, or in this case in the guise of Legion's Imperialis. This is a, a small scale mass battle game set in the Horus Heresy, and I played this tons when I was a kid, and I'm going to gush about it loads, probably not in this video, but in next week's. For this week's, I wanted to take a look at the marine side of things, and an army painting viewpoint. Now, although these miniatures are teeny tiny, the details on them, certainly the vehicles, they're fantastic and they're big enough that you can create absolute masterpieces. I mean, just go and look at some of the stuff people like Rich Gray, uh, Warmaster Painting and stuff are doing. Th th these models look fantastic when you paint them up to, to, to the nth degree. But you don't obviously don't have to paint them to that level if you want to create an amazing looking army of them. And I think what we're going to hear a lot of and see a lot of is people talking about needing to do high contrast things, needing to change your painting when you're doing these small scale stuff. And you certainly can, and you can get some really effective results by doing it in that way. I've already seen a couple of articles, a great video by Byron over on Artis Opus about that very thing. But I sort of wondered, do you have to do it that way? Um, what if you don't love super high contrast what if you would rather just like i'm thinking here why can't i just paint them in a slightly simpler version of how i paint my normal scale or 32 mil scale horus heresy miniatures would that work if i apply you know a few key principles and i thought why not let's just do one version of every single legion scheme and see how it ends up so let's paint I'm going to use uh, vehicles for this tutorial, or the vehicles and the, and the dreadnoughts, and that's simply because they're a larger canvas and they allow me to show everything off that I want to for the video. I would approach painting the marines in exactly the same way. Um, they're obviously just even simpler. The best tip I can give you for the marines, or tip, this is what I am doing with painting mine, is I'm choosing to paint them whilst they're still on the sprue. Now the vast majority of them, the only little join point is at, on the bottom of the base. So you have to snip them off at that point and you're going to have to glue them onto the base. I would prefer to paint them on the sprue like this and then glue them into the bases. And this is simply so I've got better access to the miniatures. I got halfway through gluing a, a Terminator squad onto one of the bases and I was like, oh no, how am I going to get to that guy at the back to do this, that and the other? So for me, I think it will be a more uh, efficient way of doing things. But I say, would paint them in exactly the same way as I'm going to do the vehicles. So what are these little changes I'm going to make to, to simplify things, uh, sort of key uh, principles, if you will. So for me, it's I'm not going to mask anything. If I want stripes and whatnot, then I'm just going to hand paint them. I'm not going to do any sponging or chipping of any sort, not tippy-tappy chipping, all that sort of thing. No, none of that. Uh, I'm not going to black out my metals before painting them. Um, and this is because I'm going to rely on a heavy wash to do an awful lot of the work, both for definition, for things like that, but also for the weathering. Uh, and I think it can be achieved uh, in that way. So very, very similar things that I'm going to do on the big scale models, but I'm simplifying nearly everything. And I'm going to use as big a brush as possible whenever I'm doing it. Because again, I'm approaching this from army painting. You know, I painted these 18 schemes together in one go, which was wildly inefficient. Um, but it was the only way it was getting done, but it really did help me get an idea as I'm sat there doing it, going, oh, do you know what, if I had to replicate this across 10 rhinos, 10 predators, whatever, and to me that's what Epic is about, big squadrons of vehicles, you know, battalions of infantry, you know, is this doable, is this realistic, and are you getting an army done? And I think you are. So before we jump into the individual schemes, for which I've given myself a minute to do, each of them, uh, hence the thumbnail title. There's a few sort of universal things that I wanted to cover before we go into the individual stuff. Um, and that's things like the pre-shade. So for everything where I've used a grayscale pre-shade, this is how I'm doing it. I'm starting over a black primer. I've used Color Forge matte black here, and then I'm airbrushing over Tamiya flat white. Now I'm using a 0.4 millimeter needle and nozzle on our Harder and Steenbeck uh, signature series Evolution here. I'm spraying at about 25 PSI, and I've thinned that Tamiya white about three or four drops of Tamiya X28 thinner to every one drop of Tamiya flat white. You can see here I'm focusing on brightening up the top, um, hitting it you know, very much like a zenithal straight from above, so everything facing upwards is brighter. And then when I move on to the sides, I'm making the bottom of the sides darker, uh, sorry, the bottom of the sides lighter rather, so the tops are darker. And this is to create a little additional contrast. But again, this is how I paint my big tanks anyway. I like that contrast at the top where you've got black at the top of the side and then bright white on the top 
of the vehicle. But it's very quick, very simple. As you can see, it's taking me about, even though this is sped up, it's probably taking me 20 to 30 seconds a tank, if that. Um, and it, a nice bright pre-shade to start from. Now, this is something I don't do at 32 mil scale, but I did think benefited uh, at this smaller scale. And that is uh, a white dry brush at this point. And effectively, this is going to provide a little bit of edge highlighting for us uh, in advance. Um, depending on the scheme, this is going to be more or less effective, um, but it doesn't take very long. And I do genuinely think it's worthwhile doing uh, in addition. For any of the candy schemes or the metallic schemes, I'm going to start with a silver pre-shade. So in this case, I've chosen a very dark silver here. This is uh, exhaust manifold. Uh, and then I'm choosing a nice bright silver. And in this case, it was a uh, model air steel, I think, but just a light silver. And I'm doing exactly the same thing I did with the white over the black. So bottom of the sides, nice and bright, front of the back, but bright, top of the tank, bright, slight fade to the rear of the tank. And then we'll do the same. We'll dry brush on a nice bright silver here. Which ones you use don't massively matter. You just want, you know, a darker one and a lighter one. And as I said, this is exactly how I do my 30k, uh, my large scale 30k stuff as well. For simplicity's sake, I've used the same varnish on all the different schemes. And that varnish is, to so the final finish as it were on the model, is going to be matte. And that's the Lucky Varnish range by Ammo MIG. I'm really enjoying using this at the moment in the airbrush. I don't feel I need to dilute it at all when I'm spraying at 25 psi. Couple of coats following the manufacturer's guidelines. I really like the finish. It's a lot less matte than the ultra matte varnishes I've been using for the last few years. And I just prefer that look at the moment. So I do the full decal stage. Uh, it's the process which I'll link up video uh, dedicated to that at the top now and then once that's completed I put the matte coat on and that's it no more varnish is going to go on the models okay see if we can do this in a one 18 legions 18 minutes let's go okay dark angels so first highlight is going to be a three to one mix of incubi darkness to black so very dark turquoise highlighting the bottom of the sides top a little bit just like we did on our pre-shape now we're going to add a drop of ivory into that mix so 311 and this is our final highlight for the black which is hitting a smaller area you can see big big difference but it's still looking black a nice kind of blue black then exactly the same mix but not in the airbrush this time I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing here so because it's a black scheme it's different to our pre-shade so we need to do it at uh, this step for a red stripe simplest way draw a stripe in white then color it in with red I've chosen corn red here, it's a nice deep red. I think it looks really cool next to that black. Then we apply decals and varnish, always a matte varnish. For the tracks, nice and simple, all metallic parts on it using exhaust manifold by Metal Color Series. And once all that's dry, a nice heavy wash using a 50-50 mix of shadow brown and dark brick red by Absalom 502. Really important when you finish the oil wash, take it off the cork. Right, on to Empress Children. So this is over the traditional white pre-shade, one color, Contrast paint, Luxium purple. Thin it about three drops of thinner, uh, normal airbrush thinner to paint. Apply it in a few layers, build up the color, and you get this beautiful, uh, oh, I think, purple for it. For the white parts, I'm base coating it using intermediate blue, Vallejo model air, about 50-50 thin in there. Just get it working through. Always 25 psi for everything I'm spraying here, so thin accordingly to what you're using. And then to create the highlight, I'm using Tamiya flat white. Whereas remember with the Tamiya's, use your Tamiya thinners. Decals and varnish. Again, I'll link up in the top, same for everyone. Metals, this exhaust manifold. Again, I love these metal color series paints because they flow really, really nicely. And then for any elements that are gonna be like a gold or a bronze on these vehicles, I'm just gonna base coat them using decayed metal. Maybe I'll highlight them using a gold or whatever later if I want. And then again, once all that's dry, no more varnish or anything like that, straight over with a nice heavy oil wash. And you're going to need to reapply these oil washes depending on the scheme. Some of them I did two or three times, other ones one wash was enough. Iron Warriors, the Iron Fourth, one of my absolute favourites. So over our silver pre-shade, I'm going to give it a couple of coats of Skeleton Horde. It's just to colour and slightly tarnish the metal and make it look a little bit more like a sort of burned iron. And then for the black details, just painting them in black. Now it wouldn't be Iron Warriors without Hazard Stripe, so I'm not a massive fan of them in 30k if I'm honest, but you know they're, they're cool enough so again base coat it in white and then i'm using imperial fist because it was too fun not to use that color to create it and then painting in the black stripes i actually found it easier here in the end to put a little thin black stripe either side of that just to help me tidy up the edges once all the decals and the varnish is dry again matte varnish and all these things ammo mig lucky matte varnish i'm going to use exhaust manifold 
even though everything's silver, I think it's important to differentiate between the tracks and the exhaust and things like that and the silver scheme on the actual tank. Then decay metal again for any bits that are going to be a bronze or a brass or whatever. And this time I use shadow brown again. Nice heavy wash. Um, I did have to do it a couple of times uh, over this one to get the definition that I wanted. Right, four hour white scars. Over a black base, I'm spraying Rock Grey by AK. Um, it's not the best thing, the airbrush. If you've got something like Carrickstone by GW, that worked just fine too. But that kind of slightly warmer off-white colour. You can see I've used a, a blue there on the world as one on the right. So you do get a slight difference. And then we're going to highlight that up using uh, Tamiya Flat White again. And then using Vallejo Model Colour White, so a nice thick acrylic white, I'm giving it the dry brush. When it comes to the red details, I've chosen Mephiston Red here. It's got decent coverage, it will do over white anyway, but it's a nice bright red colour. Then it's decals and varnish again. And on to metals, and you've guessed it, it's exhaust manifold. Flows beautifully. I was really impressed with how it went over the white here, to be honest with you. Uh, and I'm just doing all the body parts and the weapons and everything like that. Now for the wash on the white one, I've chosen to use Starship Filth, which is kind of a grimy grey colour. Um, I actually think it's very effective, uh, and I only needed two washes on this scheme. Now, Space Wolves, one of my favourites. I'm always very close to starting a Space Wolves 30k army. Uh, over that matte black primer, I'm going in with Vallejo Model Air Dark Sea Grey, about 50 50 with thinner, nice solid base coat. And to highlight it, using Games Workshop Eshing Grey, uh, fast becoming one of my favourite greys in the bin bag of grey paints that I have. Uh, and just kind of zenithal highlighting here, so down from the top, picking up those areas that face up, making them brighter. And then another Games Workshop paint, Dawnstone here, with a very, very gentle dry brush, just to pick out some of those edges. And for details, I've gone for black here. I use Vallejo Model Colour Black because it's the black I like working with, but you just pick whichever one's your favourite. And then for the few little red details, I decided to go with Mephiston Red. Decals and varnish, again, links up in the top to decals. Exhaust Manifold, it's the metal of choice for all of this. Um, I was going to change it up depending, but it works so well. I decided I really didn't need to. And the nice heavy wash of the Shadow Brown colour. So Shadow Brown's kind of a little bit darker than most Burnt Umber uh, oil that you'll find from other companies. Uh, and actually Burnt Umber by Abtalung's too, uh, too light for me. Uh, but if you've got Burnt Umber by another range, it'd be absolutely fine. On to the Imperial Fist. So we're base coating it with Mournfang Brown kind of orangey brown colour and then exactly the same as we did on a grayscale pre-shade we're going over with the flat white except I guess this is brown scale and then for the yellow my two favourite yellows I'm going to put Yandan uh, contrast paint over it first all over the model and then I'm going to use Nasdreg yellow just in the areas that are the shade this will give them a little bit more colour and it'll help create an additional tone where the two of them blend over each other as well because that's exactly how I do my fists for, for 30k. Black details, Vallejo model colour black, nice big brush, nice just simple bold stripes. Decals and varnish, onto exhaust manifold. This one didn't cover brilliantly over the yellow, actually I had to go a couple of times over with exhaust manifold. And then I've chosen to do a slightly red brown mix here, so it's a 50-50 mix of shadow brown and dark brick red. If you haven't got these colours you could use something like a 50-50 mix of burnt umber and burnt sienna. The Night Laws, this is actually one of my favourite ones that came out from the process. I've always struggled to get just the right blue for these guys, so I thought it's a good opportunity to test something out. I've tried Leviadon blue here over just the white pre-shade, and personally I think it looks amazing. Um, it's, it's very close to how I have them in my head, so I might try this out on a on a larger scale one. Perhaps that um, thingy team we saw recently, actually that kill team we saw the other week. Uh, and then just Mephiston red for the red details, and for any lightning, just paint it on in white. Um, there's tons of great uh, um, videos out there for how to draw lightning, but essentially draw one bold, jaggedy line that starts somewhere and finishes on an edge. Then you can just draw little ones that come off from the edge of it. But as long as that main one is starting and finishing on an edge, it should look pretty, pretty authentic. Exhaust manifold again. Went over this darker blue, absolutely fine. And I've chosen to use black here as an oil wash. And that's just, I really like black oil washes over blue schemes. For me, it just works well and over red schemes to be fair. So it seemed like a bit of a no brainer here. Um, I think I did go back in and do a bit of brown on the exhausts and the tracks once it was dry though. Blood Angels, very, very effective scheme. Red always looks fantastic on the table. Red armies are generally some of my favourite. So over that nice strong pre-shade, we're going over the whole model with a few coats of Blood Angels Red contrast paint. It's not just a perfect name, I think it's the perfect colour for them. It's that slightly orangey red. And then in the areas of shadow and that sort of area between the two, the mid-tone, I'm going to spray uh, Flesh Terrors Red here. Again, another contrast paint. I've just thinned these with normal airbrush thinner like I always do. Um, just to, to sort of take the edge off slightly. 
and then for the black elements over the black I'm using scale 75 eclipse gray and I'm going to highlight it using scale 75 graphene gray honestly just use whatever grays you like I choose these because they were slightly blue which works well you know, with the red um, but scale paints aren't wonderful in the airbrush so if you've got some you prefer to just use them but I thought I'd throw in a ton of different recipes in this video because may as well right and then on to exhaust manifold one of the worst ones to cover over this really surprised me took uh, two or three coats to get a nice smooth coat uh, over that red and then decayed metal for the bronze elements once that was all done uh, I went with shadow brown I found it pulled a little bit more on the sickering compared to the rhinos um, but you know with all these oils you're always going to have to go around and clean them up once they're dry but it is effectively the last stage of the model then on to Iron Hands, one of my absolute favourite schemes that the old Forge World team came up with, uh, led by Phil Shashinskas, Mark Bedford here. They created this lovely sort of beaten oil on water, just wonderful look. Uh, I've done this on a larger scale, um, one in our Heresy playlist, and I'm just replicating it here. So we've gone Skeleton Horde over the Silver Pre-Shade, then Shaish Purple Blobs, more or less all over it, about 80% of it covering it. A few are uh, a few less blobs using a green contrast paint there, uh, Warp Lightning, and then a couple of coats all over of Black Templar, which is basically grey, um, and it just sort of knocks it all back a little bit more. And it leaves you with this lovely dark colour, but is a little bit more interesting than, say, just yet another black armoured uh, marine. And then just black for the details. Uh, and for the sort of larger areas of brassy bronze, I've gone to Cave Metal, and then I've airbrushed Rune Lord Brass over them, um, I really like that as a secondary colour along with the black uh, on uh, the iron hands. And for the tracks, exhaust manifold again. Coverage was great because it was more or less over black anyway. Uh, and then shadow brown for this. I could have gone all sorts, could have gone red brown would look great, black would look great, but shadow brown is such a sort of jack of all trades. Why not use it? What's this one going to be? 12th Legion. So that's going to be the World Eaters. So intermediate uh, blue for the base coat and then flat white. So much like you were building up a, a white, a uh, grayscale pre-shade, uh, but we're just trying to be a little bit smoother with the transitions here because we're not going to be putting anything over the top of it. This is going to be the finish. And I like that intermediate blue because it gives that kind of sort of cold blue-gray look to it. And because uh, this is the final finish, uh, I'm going to go over with that little white dry brush. Again, Vallejo model color. It's my favorite white. Until we've got our paint range out, these are the black and whites that I'm going to be using. And um, for the secondary colour, I really like the blue because um, I think it works well against the red decals. Uh, for this, I've used Cantor Blue. The decals actually were fantastic, to be honest, that I got in the box. Um, but I did use the odd um, one from their respective 30k sheets as well. And then Exhaust Manifold, surprisingly covered really well over white. Uh, and I've gone for Starship Filth again. So just like the white scars on the white schemes, I went for Starship Filth. But I did go back in with a brown on the World Eaters one, just to grunge it up a little bit in different areas. Okay, you're always going to have to clean them up. You're always going to have to, I say always, you're often going to have to apply more than one coat of the oils. Ultramarines. I think this one's a really effective scheme. Um, we've gone Talisar blue contrast paint over the white pre-shade and then into the shadows with Azurum and blue, also a contrast paint. I'm using a lot of GW paints here because they're really easy to get hold of. They're really airbrush friendly and I kind of hope some people are going to come to this video kind of new into Epic and I want to reduce as many barriers as I can for people to, to have a go at painting them. Um, I know there's a ton anyway, but it doesn't hurt to, uh, to help out, does it? And then Exhaust Manifold. Uh, I chose not to do any secondary colours for the Ultras. Um, I think the white decals are, are plenty. So, uh, so yeah, that was enough for me. And then Decay Metal. Once all that was dry, like I said, on blue schemes, I really like doing a black oil wash. Uh, and I left it at black on this one. I didn't go back in with a brown or anything like that. I think it was just two. Uh, two goes around with the, the oil wash. So one, let it dry, tidy it up a little bit, and then go back in with a more targeted one. Death Guard. One of my absolute favourite legions to paint. Works amazing at larger scale, works amazing at small scale. We're base coating it using Tamiya Flat Earth. So remember Tamiya, we're using Tamiya X20A thinner. Probably thin this about three drops of thinner to one drop of paint. And then the highlight, we're using another Tamiya, this time at Deck Tam. So again, Zenithal highlight, orientate the model so that you're spraying almost straight down onto it and you'll just pick up those edges and leave that dark colour in the recesses, providing you with plenty of contrast. And then a little uh, dry brush there of, I think it was rock grey, ivory no it was ivory uh, but just a thick off-white and then castellan green for the green details decals not too many with the death guard 
uh, and then exhaust manifold for all the weapons and all the skeleton uh, on the dreads and then a really heavy wash of shadow brown i think i went in three times with this so let it dry cleaned it up another one cleaned it up another one good to go thousand suns now i'm a big big fan of the metallic scheme for thousand suns but i've also really enjoyed that kind of cherry red that we've seen from different people like over at warmaster painting did a great cherry red one andy's done a lovely cherry red uh, thousand suns so i thought i'd try and combine the two here so i've used decayed metal all over and then peridot alchemy a very very light sort of green gold zenithal highlight over it and then a little dry brush with that paint as well and then I'm going over with Bowl Red, which is a newish contrast paint by Games Workshop. Very, very powerful. So I've thinned this probably a good two or three drops of airbrush thinner to every drop of paint. And just build it up. And so we've still got that cherry red color, but a little bit of that kind of shine coming through uh, from the metallic pre-shade. And then for the white elements, I've just based it. I think I've used uh, the rock gray there, but Carrack Stone, something like that would be absolutely fine. And then build up just using the white. Um, really very simple to do little brush blends because the areas are so so small and then good old exhaust manifold reason i've left exhaust manifold noisy videos was to give me a chance to breathe um but they are in all of them uh, and then it's shadow brown for the recess wash sons of horus so very very popular one poster boys the brave Horusian freedom fighters uh, they are, I've gone for uh, Sons of Horus Green all over a normal pre-shade. Then we're hitting these shadows with Lupercal Green. Uh, these were both the normal layer versions. I don't know if you can still get the air versions. So these are just the normal uh, air ver um, layer versions. Uh, and the, I think they're layer paints. They're not base, but anyway, the normal small pot versions. And then we're doing exactly the same as we did for the Blood Angels turrets, which is why you see here. I've tried wherever possible to pair the legions up and give them the same vehicle. And it worked for probably about 80% of it. I thought it was kind of fun. Kept me entertained anyway as I was doing all of this. Uh, and then good old exhaust manifold. Easily the worst one to cover over with. No idea. But light green, it just, just did not want to cover over. Uh, and then decayed metal. I definitely shouldn't have recorded these all in one go. Um, the audio. Right. Uh, Shadow brown. I think it was. Maybe the red brown mix would have said on the screen. Along with the uh, Night Lords, I think this is my favorite scheme that I came up with for this one. So, so simple and word bearers what I'm going to be running in the campaign. I'm playing with my friends, a Shadow Crusade one. Uh, it's Berserker Blood Shade, which is a shade paint all over the silver pre-shade. That's it. And then black in on there. Well, I've chosen to slow-mo the exhaust manifold here. It's kind of like m &S advert. Uh, right, then Shadow Brown all over. Very, very effective. Um, absolutely love it. Can't wait to paint my detachments up like that. Salamanders, I think, probably along with the Ultramarines, the most effective one uh, for this little video. Uh, I've used Orc Flesh, which is contrast paint. Uh, a few layers of that straight over the uh, normal grayscale pre-shade. I uh, think it's come out absolutely beautiful. And then the layer model color black for the details. Decals and varnish. Did tons of decals for these guys because they love it, don't they? All that ornamentation. Um, Always handy have a little pair of tweezers because uh, you're going to get sort of hairs and things on the models, particularly I find when I'm doing a lot of airbrushing, it tends to collect them and, and stick them on the model. Uh, and decayed metal, say for that. I think I maybe went in with a little bit of gold over that for the Sallies, but I can't remember. Uh, and then I went for a red-brown mix on the green because obviously red-brown works lovely, doesn't it? Um, next to the green anyway. Nearing the end now, uh, probably the most efficient one to paint next, the Raven Garden. Actually, I think they end up looking really cool. Uh, I've used Corvus Black here as the first highlight. So again, we're just focusing on the top and then the bottom of the sides, bottom of the back, bottom of the front. You see the difference that makes already over just that black primer. And then I'm using Eshing Grey very, very sparingly here for the final highlight. So we're just kind of picking out the front tops of the bits at the front uh, and a little bit on that bottom edge. And then using Ashen Grey here, very, very gentle, just sort of powder his nose and uh, just pick some of those edges out. Decals, massive impact on Ravens. Um, you know, that that contrast, the black next to the white is lovely. And then you can see how delicious Exhaust Manifold looks straight over that. Really, really like this scheme, if I'm honest. Um, I went with Shadow Brown for the oil wash here because I've gone with the red brown wash on the Dark Angels one. I just thought it was nice to um, show the differences between you can get between what both ostensibly black armor. And then Alpha Legion, I've gone for the classic uh, candy scheme because I absolutely love it. I'm using contrast paints here, though, not Tamiya's. Uh, we've gone for Pterodon Turquoise all over and then hit the shadows with Acalian Green. Details, I really like black as the secondary color uh, for the Alphas. I think it can get quite full on this scheme. 
Uh, so I think black as a secondary for most legions, I think is works really, really well. Uh, and again, exhaust manifold all over. And much like Sons of Horus actually didn't cover great over this, this bluey green colour. And I went for the red brown wash on this because again, that red brown next to the green really, really, uh, I, I think it's very, very effective. Okay, I've had a cup of tea, feeling a bit better now. Now all the schemes I think look absolutely fabulous even just after those steps, but there is one additional stage I think is worthwhile doing on all of them, and that is the lenses. And for this, I'm using an old sort of military modeling uh, technique, which is where we're using incredibly bright silver. In this case, I've used chrome. And then over that, we put a clear. Now I really like using the Tamiya clears for this. They're I forget the exact name for them, but they're basically like lacquers. Um, they've got this beautiful candy look to them. They're very viscous. Um, and they just they provide great depth uh, for doing this with. But if you haven't got them, then you can kind of make your own up using something like an ink and a gloss varnish. Um, so we go in with our really, really bright silver, just dotting those lenses. Um, so I think I did these ones on the rhinos and then the little targeters and stuff on the, the things like the predators and things. It's, you know, if, if you're lining your tanks up, it's not taking you long. And I think it's, it's absolutely a worthwhile stage because it... Yeah, for the amount of effort, I think it vastly improves um, the look of uh, the things. And again, it does provide a nice little bit of contrast um, and works particularly well at this scale. Kind of works great at this scale and then much bigger scale. I'm not sure how well it works at sort of 28 mil. Um, I like it, but it's not it's certainly not for everybody. Uh, and then when you're applying it, just neat with the brush. Um, probably about three layers. Don't rush it. Let each layer dry. Um, and you're good to go. So I say if you line your tanks up, just go dot, dot, dot along, dot, dot, dot along on the rest of them. I wanted to touch on basing for this uh, because I'm going to do it on the Dreadnoughts and because I'm not doing infantry in this video. Uh, so this is the way I'm doing the basing on all of my stuff. And a lot of this is to do with um, because of those little base tabs that you get on the miniatures as well. So I'm just painting it a grey uh, if there's any overspray on there. So in this case, I use dark sea grey. And then I'm going to make up a wash using a texture paint. This is Dry Ground by uh, AK. Water, just normal water here really really watered it down and I just washed this over the whole base and what this does is just deposits little areas of grit and dirt in certain areas still builds up a little bit of texture but still feels fairly in scale then I'm going to make up a pigment wash um, for this I'm using two pigments light sienna here and metal slag so a light earth color and a dark earth color basically and put them in a little mixing dish if you're ever looking for these just google um, metal mixing dish for paint and it come up everywhere you buy them in loads of packs uh, and I'm going to make the wash up using uh, thinner this time rather than water and that's all to do with surface tension and whatnot uh, but it also acts as a little bit of a fixed tiff as well uh, and this is just you know a Vallejo um, again manufacturers recommended way of using the products and it is very effective and this allows me to wash all over the texture that we've created and it just I think it just helps keep things much more in scale if I just did my usual smash powders all over it I think it would be overpowering so it's very very similar to what I do on most of my 32 mil stuff but just these little tweaks and here we have them all 18 legions did those little tweaks work well I think yes I, I really do like you know I'm viewing these from the distance on, on a table and I can clearly make out the details I think a lot of that's to do with how good the sculpts are um you know and how crisp the the castings are being being plastic and yeah I can tell what everything is I can I can read all the models and all of that and I haven't really changed how I've painted too much it's just a real simplification of how I paint my larger scale miniatures so as I said in the intro there are amazing versions and a ton of different ways to paint these models but just as when you're going to get people going oh why haven't you drilled your barrels drilled this and that it's like you just don't need to do these things you may want to and personally I think it's really fun and I enjoy that and next week when I show you my personal army for epic which is solar auxilia I'm going to be taking everything much much further so we're going to go into sort of labor of love you know detail level with with my tanks and stuff like that and what I've done to them but this still looks great what I've done here and it was efficient and I would much rather see a finished army done to this kind of standard you know without drilled barrels simpler you know techniques and and still achieved quickly and finished and on the table than I would to see someone's you know Instagram post about them drilling a barrel and never see an army from them so just paint how you want and don't you know don't listen to people don't listen to me <laughs> don't listen to anybody um but I I just I just worry that particularly with epic you know and maybe this is just because I I love this game so much and I think these new miniatures particularly the vehicles are just outstanding 
Um, I just want everyone to play it. I want people to enjoy it. I want opponents to game against. I want to see loads of different armies and takes online. You know, I can't wait to see people taking individual models as well and painting them up to showcase standard. Um, so I just, I would hate anybody to feel put off by it because there's these kind of caveats that you have to do this and you have to do that. Um, and, and I just don't think you do. You know, um, there's a ton of different ways you can paint these models and they probably all make them look fantastic. So yeah, I don't know, a bit preachy that one, it wasn't meant to be, <laughs> it's just uh, just something I care quite a lot about this one. I really hope you've enjoyed the video, thanks ever so much for sticking with me, uh, if you have done, goodness, goodness knows how long this thing has been. Um, I'd love to know which scheme you think's come out well as, uh, as well, you know, I think at this scale certain ones definitely jump out to me um, more than others, um, so I'd be interested to know in the comments if, you, uh, if you've got a particular favourite. Uh, and as ever, if you've got any questions about them, pop them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Massively appreciate all your support here with likes and subscribes. They do make a huge difference to us, but particularly over on Patreon. You know, you guys supporting us there allows myself and Andy to do this as a living to produce content each week here and there. And hopefully you're enjoying what we're putting out. I'm loving this epic. There's going to be more next week. Get prepared to hear me just gush about solar and tanks and tiny aerials and all this kind of thing um, but I hope you're going to enjoy it so thanks very much for watching take care I'll see you next time if you've liked any of the models in this video and you fancy having an army of them yourself but perhaps you don't have the time or wherewithal to get it done consider dropping us an email at commissions at cultofpaint.com and maybe Ben can sort you out